Hello and welcome back to CS11. This is lecture number 10. In today's lecture, I'm going to write a demonstration program to find the sum and average of a series of values. We're going to talk about reading data until end of file or EOF and what that means and how to do it. And I'm going to talk about the concepts of standard in and standard out and then also talk about redirection. First of all, Let's talk about how to find the sum and average of a series of values. This example comes from section 4.7 of the textbook, Common Loop Algorithms. This is the most important part of learning about programming. It's not learning more commands, it's learning how to put them together. And section 4.7 shows you some commonly used recipes. It's kind of like, you know, recipes for cooking. If you were going to cook a dish, you'd follow the recipe and, and get good results. And likewise, in programming, you have standard algorithms, and when you need to solve a certain task, you just use that algorithm that's designed to solve that task. Okay, so let's write a program that gets a series of values and then adds them together to calculate a sum and then also reports what the average value is. Here I'll create a double variable called sum and an integer variable called count. Now, how are we going to get a series of values? We'd like to be flexible to allow the user to enter five values if they want, or 50,000. So that means that the user is going to need to have some way of indicating, oh, I put in all the values. And there's two ways you could do this, the wrong way and the right way. The wrong way would be to pick some kind of sentinel or arbitrary value for the user to input to indicate that they're uh, at the end of input. So for example, you know, enter values zero to quit. Now the problem with that is that maybe the value that you picked to indicate that there's no more input is a value that the user wants to use with their data. So the correct way is to read until something called EOF. EOF stands for end of file but what it is, is the signal, the standard signal, that indicates that you've reached the end of input. No more input. Now, confusingly enough, there is also a command called EOF. CN.EOF. Don't use that command. It's not going to work very well for you. So, not going to use that. There's a simple way to test for EOF when you're doing input, and that is to take the input that you were going to use and use it as the controlling condition of a while loop. So for example, here I will input to temp. Oh, we're going to need a variable called temp. Let's add one. Okay, so notice I've taken my input command and used it as the controlling condition of this while loop. Now, an input command has the second property of also evaluating to true or false. And it's true if there's more input, and it's false if there's no more input. So now, here, I have a program that's going to loop and get each input while there's more input and stop when there's no more input. And that's the correct way to read all of the input until EOF or end of file. All right, let's prompt the user. See out, enter doubles EOF to quit. Here, let's add it into the sum, sum plus equals temp, and count plus plus. All right, let's compile and test the program and run. And I can type in doubles, 3.45667, negative 9, 12.3. When I'm doing input from the keyboard, how do you signal EOF? And the answer is on most systems, control D, D. The control D has to B on a line by itself as the first thing on the line. I'll do control D and that signals to the param there's no more input. 
This is the standard way to do it, and the technique that you should always use when you're writing programs that have to input an unspecified amount of input. Notice, by the way, that the user could say control D is the very first thing and then not input any values into the program. In that case, this loop would never execute and sum and count will remain with their initial values. All right, well, let's just finish up this program here. We can add a test because we're not going to want to try and calculate the average if the count is zero. So if count is greater than zero, See out you entered count values. See out the sum is sum. Cut and paste that line, copy, paste. And the average is sum divided by count. Notice that sum is a double and count is an integer, so that's legal. And it will promote the value from count to be a double and do um, regular double arithmetic. Otherwise, if count is not greater than zero, I'll see out you didn't enter any values. End line. Okay, let's test the program. Compile and run, enter some values, three, four, five, six, control D, says I entered four values, sum is 18, average is 4.5. Run it again, control D, it says I didn't enter any values. So now we've got a nice working program that reads uh, all input until end of file. Let's talk about standard in, standard out, and redirection. Here's a picture of a program. It could be a program that we've written, could be any program uh, on the system. And in C++, we use or have used C out and C in to get input and output. And we might imagine that C out is connected to the screen and that C in is connected to the keyboard. Here, let's make that look more like a keyboard. It doesn't really look like a keyboard. But that's not true. C in and C out are not connected to the keyboard and screen. And in fact, we know that that can't be true from just our knowledge of basic computing, which tells us that the operating system manages input and output devices on a computer. So when we send information to see in and see out, it doesn't actually go to the keyboard or the screen, it goes to the operating system. And the operating system decides where that information is going to go. In C++ we use see in and see out. Other programming languages calls, call these with different names. For example, system dot in and system dot out are what they're called in Java. So there's a standard generic name and that's called standard in stdi in and std out standard in and standard out which in C++ we connect to with the C in and C out. I'll generally use the terms standard in and standard out because those are the generic terms rather than specifically saying C in and C out. Okay, that input source and output source is managed by the operating system and the operating system can choose a different source or destination for you, typically a file. 
Notice that that decision of where standard output is going or where standard input is coming from is managed by the operating system. It's outside of the realm of the program. And in fact, our program, when it's running, neither knows nor cares where its input and output are going. And when we start up and launch a program, the, we can ask the operating system to redirect the source or destination of those. To redirect standard in and standard out we use the greater than and less than signs on the command line. And remember the command line is when you invoke your program. So when I say dot slash a dot out if I follow that by a greater than file name, then the program would run as normal, except all that it's sent to standard out, instead of going to the screen, would be sent to a file with this file name. You can redirect standard input or standard output, or you can do both. All right, well, how is that going to be useful to us? Let's make a, another file. And I'll put some values in it, 4.5, 6.7, 8.9, 11.13. Maybe this file we can pretend has got many values, dozens, hundreds, millions even. Let's go ahead and save it. And I'll call it input.text. OK, so there's my program. And now. I'll run the program and I'll ask it to redirect and get input from input.txt. Now, notice the program ran. I didn't recompile the program. The program hasn't changed. The param is exactly the same. It reads from CN. It didn't know when the, this program was running that it wasn't getting input from the keyboard. And notice it worked just fine and the program got all of my input from a file instead because of this redirection here. A redirection is very useful, very powerful. One way that it might be useful to you is when you're testing your programs. Notice I can run my program over and over again, giving it that input that I have prepared. And if I'm working on my program, debugging it, editing it, adding features, it's going to make testing the program much easier. If the only way that you know how to test your program is by typing things on the keyboard, then that's probably going to limit the number of times that you test a program. Imagine that on a future program, I might have you write a program that reads in an unspecified number of lines of text. And if the only way that you ever know how to test your program is by typing in some text, you'll probably bang on the keyboard a little bit and enter a word or two or a couple of sentences. But you would probably never test your program by entering eight paragraphs or 100 pages of text. But if you prepared a file with that text, not only could you test your program with eight paragraphs or 80 pages of text, but you could do it again and again and again while you're working and testing on your programs. So anyways, that's a little bit about redirection. It's a very powerful tool. And I do recommend that on your future assignments that you in addition to testing your program interactively, where you type in values as you're running the program, that you also prepare input files that you can use to test your programs with. Okay, well that wraps up on this lecture. Thank you very much.